Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Prayer Problems Podcast. This is a podcast all about real problems that real people face when it comes to prayer. I don't know about you, but throughout my life, I've always wanted to try to grow in prayer, but there have been different seasons and times where I've had problems with prayer. Maybe you don't know what to pray or how to pray or how to beat distractions. That's what this podcast podcast is all about. Um, we talk about real problems from real people to help us grow in prayer to know God better, know Jesus better. And um, this episode is going to be an awesome episode. It is about how can I build a deeper prayer life? But if this is your first episode, I'd encourage you to jump back to episode one where we talked about what is prayer. Prayer. That'll give you a good foundation to start from, but you can always watch this episode. They all stand on their own um, and watch that at another point in time. We're going to open up with a little bit of prayer, and then we're going to jump into the topic for today. So God, we just thank you for this time that we have together. Lord, bless it. God, help us to grow in prayer. Lord, let that be the greatest desire in our hearts, to grow in prayer with you, to know you and to love you better. God, help us to build a deeper prayer life, starting today, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, today's topic or conversation for this episode is really a question. How can I build a deeper prayer life? Many of us have had situations where we feel, man, I just wish my prayer life was deeper. I wish I wish I had a deeper relationship with God through prayer. I wish I knew how to pray in deeper ways. Uh, you know, sometimes <laughs> I remember when I was younger, it was just like, man, how can I pray for more than two minutes? Like, I just cannot figure this out. And so whether you are have been a Christian for a long time, or you are more newly saved, just following Jesus, um, and it's something that's fresh for you, or maybe you don't even follow Jesus yet. There's even people that don't know the Lord are like, I wish I knew how to pray. You know, you watch a movie, and all of a sudden in the movie, something crazy is happening. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's spiritual, and everybody's like, oh, I gotta pray, I gotta pray, Lord. I don't know. I haven't talked to you in a long time, but you know, like it's like everybody wants to have a deeper prayer life. And so, um, I, I just want to encourage you in this episode is going to be, it's going to be, um, helpful for you, giving you hopefully a different angle to develop a deeper life of prayer with God. Now, one of the challenges that we face when we want to grow in prayer, and especially it's something that I hear a lot in whether it's videos, podcasts, preaching, sermons, is that when we want to grow in prayer, the message that we receive oftentimes boils down to two words, try harder. Okay, A lot of the messages, a lot of the things, a lot of the ways that we talk about prayer, and just in general, a lot of the things in the Christian life is, is, hey, you know what? If you want to grow in prayer, here's the seven things that you need to do. You need to do these seven things. You need to... Um, you need to set a time aside. You need to, um, write down a list of prayers. You need to pray even when you don't feel like it. You need to X, Y, Z, boom, 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 boom. Do all these things if you want a deeper prayer life. And those things are good, but they can't be the source of your growth. And let me tell you why, because it comes down to your ability. It comes down to you trying harder to be a better person. Christian, and that is not biblical Christianity, okay? That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that Jesus Christ is king, and that we are messed up, and that Jesus died for us to make him like him, okay? He is the author and the perfecter of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2. And so when we look to Jesus, he's actually going to make us more like him. It's not about us trying just harder to to be better, okay? It's not self-improvement, but it is about Christ actually transforming our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so a lot of times when we talk about growing in prayer, a lot of it kind of boils down to this try harder message. And um, when it's just about trying harder, then what happens oftentimes is you have a good season, a good time of prayer, 
but something else comes up, you just get exhausted, you get frustrated, um, your, your schedule changes or, you know, whatever the case is, and you burn out, you give up. And that is not what God wants uh, from us and wants for us in our prayer lives. He wants us to grow in prayer, but he wants to help us do it. So I want to read a scripture that's going to help us build a deeper prayer life. It is in Jesus' ministry in a very special moment where the disciples asked Jesus how to pray. So Luke chapter 11, verse 1 says, He was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. Now, there's a couple of things that are happening here. First, it says that he was praying. Who was praying? Jesus was praying in a certain place, and so the disciples saw Jesus praying. Do you think that this is the only time that the disciples saw Jesus pray? No way. There are even um, situations later on in the gospel, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus actually invites some of the disciples with him to go to pray. And so Jesus would have a habit of praying and seeking the Lord. There are times where he would get alone with the Father in the wilderness, but then there were times where he was praying with the disciples. And so the disciples saw Jesus praying. And this is what I want you to understand, is that Jesus is our greatest example of prayer. Jesus Christ and the way that he relates to the Father, the way that he grows in prayer, the way that the way that he lives a life of prayer is our greatest example of prayer in scripture. He's our example. The disciples saw Jesus praying and it made them want to pray. Okay, I, did you catch that? If, if Jesus is our example and the beauty of Jesus' relationship with the Father, the beauty of Jesus' prayer life is our example, then we will see Jesus and that will become our desire, our motivation. It will move us towards prayer, towards a praying life. We'll see Jesus praying in a certain place and we'll say, hmm, there's something about that that, that is attractive, that is that is." It's motivating me. I want that for me. Jesus should be our greatest example of prayer. You see, I find that a lot of times when we look for an example of prayer, we reach to the Old Testament, which a lot of those stories are great. The prayer of Jabez. Um, you've got Elijah and Elisha, you know, pray, praying seven times and, you know, his head between his knees. And, and, and then there was a cloud like the size of a fist. Oh, keep on praying. Try harder. Go, go, go. Pray. And we, we have these examples of prayer, which are great. They are good. But I don't think they're the most important example of prayer in the Bible. I think the most important example of prayer in Scripture is Jesus Christ himself. He is the author of our faith. He is the origin, the example, the the first, okay? And, and he is the one that we need to look to. And if we look to him as our example, the, that is going to give us a desire for something greater than what we have. When we look to Jesus, I, mean, I want to be like you. I want to I want to have what you have. I want to live that life of prayer. I want to walk like you. And Jesus, you know, he's our teacher. He's our Rabbi, he's our leader, and um, he is the greatest example of prayer. So the disciples see Jesus. He's praying in a certain place. They're inspired by Jesus' prayer life, okay? But then what they do is very, very important. It says, one disciple, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. We need to learn how to ask Jesus for help. We need to learn how to depend upon Jesus to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, to grow us. We need to learn to depend upon Jesus to help us do 
everything in our lives. You see, our, our first instinct of when I want to grow in prayer, I want to grow in Bible study, I want to grow in this, I want to be better at this, I want to, you know, I want to have more love and compassion, is to be like, okay, what are the mechanics, what are the principles, I'm going to take those and I'm going to work them really hard. And, and I really have this hunch, and I don't know if this is if this is accurate or not, but I have this hunch that the most successful people in the American church oftentimes, the most um, devoted and religious people in the American church that really follow through and do all this stuff for the Lord are just the most type A driven people personalities. If you would have plopped them in a company somewhere, they would have rocked it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and and growing with God just becomes about doing and trying harder, and because that's the makeup, they they've got it. But what about the people that it's you're not a driven person, you're not a type A, you're not a you know. And really, it's not about that anyway. Jesus is supposed to make us more like Jesus. We're not supposed to make us more like Jesus. Jesus is supposed to help us follow him, is supposed to make us into his image. Jesus is supposed to transform our hearts and our minds, okay, through the Holy Spirit. But we oftentimes just try to do it ourselves. But the disciples did something very, very, very good here, is that they humbled themselves and they said, you know, we don't really get how you do what you do. We don't really understand. We see your example and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and this relationship you have to God and we want that. We want that. And you know, it's interesting when you think about it. Most of the disciples were good Jewish boys. Okay? And that means they went through schooling. They learned how to pray. They had an average they would have had, let's say, an average understanding of prayer, the mechanics, how you do it, when you do it. The Jewish culture is very different compared to uh, modern-day culture, or American culture. The Jewish culture, they would pray in the morning, in the noon, at night. They would pray for certain things. They would have, they would have all these different things that they would do and have this life of prayer that was kind of almost, I wouldn't want to say automatic, but it was, it was very... Um, it was very part of the way of life, okay? So these disciples had an understanding of prayer already. They had um, their level of prayer already, okay? They were familiar with the ways of prayer, but they were not going to settle for that. They said, no, Jesus, we, we need you to teach us how to pray. And if I was translating the Bible, okay, I I, I like the message translation oftentimes, um, Eugene Peterson, I love all his his work. And the message translation, uh, or the message version, it's not really a translation, it, it it takes a strip scripture and puts it into common everyday language. And I read this verse in the message translation. I really wanted it to say a certain thing, you know, it's like, um, but it just says, Jesus teaches us to pray. <laughs> but if I was translating the Bible, if I was to write my version, this is what I would say. I would say, you know, if you're if you're reading um, the subtext, if you're reading the context and the story and the heart, you know, I would think that the disciples almost said, Jesus, teach us to pray, really pray. Teach us to pray, Jesus, really, we want to really pray because there's a kind of prayer that is so far beyond what our tradition is, what we've grown up with. We see your example, Jesus, and we want to live that out. We want to um, step into that kind of prayer. Teach us to pray, Jesus. Teach us really to pray. And what were the disciples doing? They were humbling themselves. They were humbling themselves. They were saying, Jesus, help us. They didn't say, Jesus, give us five principles that we can take today and we can just work them and apply them. What are the five hacks to a deeper prayer life? You know, that is a, that is a huge stumbling block temptation today in our culture is, is we are just trained up on like, what are the hacks? What are, what are, the, what are the tips and the tricks? Okay, I need a YouTube video, and it's a shame this is going to be on YouTube, but I need a YouTube video that's in 10 minutes or less. It's going to give me the five clear-cut tips and tricks to a deeper prayer life. But that's not how God works. 
It's not how God works. Sometimes that's how we try to work scripture. We had to try to take principles out and make it that easy. But that's not how God works, and that's not how a father works, okay? What father wants their kid to come to them and say, hey, you know, I'm getting older now. I'm almost 18. Can you type up for me just a list, maybe like, you know, keep it to one page, bullet points, keep it real succinct. Can you type up for me a list of like how to be an adult? how to go to college, how to, how to get a job, how to work my job, how to save money, how to, how to be a spouse. Can you just give me the bullet points for life and just keep it real clean and one, one page and then print that out and give that to me? Could you do that for me? You know, like what kind of father would be like, I would love to just do that for you. Yes, that's exactly what I want. No, a father wants to sit with their child. A father wants to be with their child and teach their child and walk through the, those things and, and, and have a conversation about those things. And that's, that's the way that God works. He's not going to give us five points to, a, to a, a deeper prayer life. He wants us to humble ourselves and come to him and ask him for help. You know, posture matters. And that's the posture that we need to have when we approach the Lord in prayer. We need to first ask him for help. We need to ask him to teach us to pray, to take us into a deeper prayer life. And, you know, the Lord's prayer is really powerful and worth studying. But sometimes, again, we take that and turn that into a formula. But remember how it starts. Jesus says, this is how you're going to relate to God. He's your, you pray, our Father in heaven. Holy is your name, our Father. And if he's our Father, then we're his children. And a child has that. That's a certain kind of posture to come to God like a child that needs help. We want principles that we can just work and use and have power and control over. But we really need to humble ourselves and come to Jesus and ask, you know, Father, help me Teach me to pray. Show me how to grow. Lead me. Holy Spirit, lead me into prayer. You know, one of my favorite stories is in Matthew chapter 4 where the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But we always jump to the, to the temptation. But there was 40 days of fasting and prayer. He didn't just sit there watching the the calendar or his watch waiting for the 40 days to be up so he could be tempted by the devil because that was the real main event. No, the 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 temptation was the tack on the end of the of the real purpose of those 40 days was prayer, was being with the Father. And I want you to notice that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness of prayer. The Spirit can lead us into prayer, but only if our posture is right, where we're, we're humble, we're soft, we're open, and we're asking for help. We're asking for the Lord to lead us. We're asking for God to take us deeper in prayer. You know, as we really grow in prayer, we, we need to continue to come in humility, to continue to relate to God that way, to continue to humbly ask for help. Wherever you're at in your prayer life, you might just be starting. You might be far along in your prayer life. I'm telling you right now, if you want a deeper prayer life, you need to ask for it. You need to ask Jesus for help. Teach me to pray. Really pray. You're my example. And I, I haven't reached the example yet. I haven't reached the, the height of prayer where you are, Jesus, where you have this deep communion, where you have this deep trust and confidence in the Lord and in God at all times. I haven't reached that place of prayer where I'm, where I'm only doing the will of the Father, where I'm only about God's kingdom. I haven't reached that place and your example so beautiful. I want, I want to be there, Lord. Help me. Teach me. Show me. And yes, there's practical things you can do. Yes, remove distractions. Yes, set a time for prayer. Yes, do all those um, practical things. But what I'm saying is that the source of a deeper prayer life is not those things. The source of a deeper prayer life is Jesus. The source of a deeper prayer life is a humble posture coming before the Lord and saying, I don't got this all figured out and I really need your help. I want to pray. I want to really Pray. So this is the big idea. To build a deeper prayer life, we must ask Jesus for help. We must humbly ask Jesus for help. And you need to keep on asking him. Keep on asking him. Keep on asking him, Lord. 
Teach me to pray. Help me pray, Lord God. Help me go deeper in prayer. Help me to grow my prayer life. And really, that is the entire Christian life is, is, Lord, help me to understand your word. Lord, help me to be more kind and gentle. Lord, help me to love my neighbor as myself. Lord, forgive me. I don't love you like I should. Help me to love you like I should. That is the entire Christian life is coming humbly before the Lord and asking him for help. And he's the one that transforms us into his image. You don't transform yourself into his image. You can't. It's not possible. If you could make yourself like Christ, then you would be Christ. You would be God. Right? Like, you you can't do it. But Jesus can. Only Jesus can. We have to humbly ask Jesus for help. So I want to encourage you, the next few times you go to pray, begin um, by asking Jesus for help with prayer. Like, start your prayers, Jesus Help me to pray. Help me with this time of prayer. I I don't know how to pray as I should. I don't know. I don't know enough. I don't understand. I don't I'm not as good at prayer as you, but I I want to grow. Help me, Lord. Teach me to pray. Teach me to really pray. I want to be like you. Show me how to pray deeper prayer. And begin your prayer times like that. And I'm telling you that Jesus will work in your life. The Holy Spirit will begin to transform your heart, transform your mind. He will He will show you how to pray. And don't be afraid to sit in silence in prayer. That's one of the one of the things that we struggle with in prayers. We feel like we got to keep talking. We got to keep talking. We got to keep going. But really, a lot of prayer should be waiting on the Lord. Silence and solitude, being alone with God and waiting on him to listen, to receive, to be a receiver of what the Lord has for you. Ask him for help. Receive that help. That's about it. All right. I hope that this encourages you. I I want you to remember that it's not all about you. And it's not all about your ability. It's about Christ's ability. It's about what he did for you and continues to do for you. And if you ask him for help, he will help you. He will transform your heart and mind. He will give you a life of prayer more beautiful than anything you ever imagined. And so that is my encouragement to you to grow a deeper prayer life. Ask Jesus for help. Amen. All right. I want to pray for you. Thank you for joining us. Father, I just thank you for every person that is uh, listening to this podcast and joining for this time. Lord, I ask that you would help them build a deeper prayer life, that you would help them grow in prayer, grow deeper in prayer, that you would bless them, that you would help them, and you would strengthen them, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today on the Prayer Problems Podcast. I encourage you, continue to pray, to seek the Lord. He's going to help you grow in prayer. And um, if you need any resources or would like to send us a prayer request, you can go to victoryaog.org slash prayer. And the link is in the show notes. And uh, there's some stuff there for you. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. And we'll see you next time.